you're watching Kruger Nation Horror Movie Reviews, this is the Freddy Shrine. Let's do it. Starting up here, we have the autograph poster from Never Sleep Again with Heather Langenkamp's autograph. Right below it, we have the original VHS of Nightmare on Elm Street. Kind of beat up. It's pretty old. Um, we have the Freddy Goblet, which is, he looks kind of like Rocky Dennis from The Mask. Yeah, pretty weird. And back there you see the Todd McFarlane poster of the original film. Up front here we have this Freddy coffee mug with him from part four and then the Wes Craven's New Nightmare Freddy. That's kind of cool. Then we have the Freddy from part one with the no stripes on the sleeves and the trash can lid. Moving on we have the Freddy snow globe. A friend got this for me, man. I love this. This thing is cool. In front here we have the three Razor Freddy. Um, I think Mezit made that. I'm not sure. Um, this is a piggy bank, a resin piggy bank that's pretty new. I really like the claws on this. They're pretty shiny and stuff, and he's got those yellow eyes. And on top of him he has the uh, little figure that came with the McFarlane Series 1 toy. And back here we have the back of that goblet with the razor, the razors on the back. And then here we have the little Walgreens animatronic Freddy I got. This is kind of cool. My yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's not Robert England's voice. I'm not sure who it is, but it's, it's not too bad. I mean, it could be a lot worse. Moving down, we have the Freddy glove I've had since I was a little bitty kid. We have the Nightmare on Elm Street 1 magnet, the Dream Warriors magnet, the, uh, I think this is uh, round Dream Warriors time 2, that Freddy picture, that magnet. We got the Dream Master part 4, and then Freddy's Dead, the Final Nightmare. I have this uh, rubber keychain. Eh, I don't really care for this. It kind of scuffs up real easily. I have a metal one that's pretty similar, but it's a lot cooler. And I actually have that on my keychain. Moving down, I have the LJN Nightmare on Elm Street video game. Very bad video game, but I loved it when I was a kid. In front of him, we got the uh, Freddy as the chef who feeds Greta her insides from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. We have, I like this one a lot right here. This is the uh, Series 2 McFarlane toy, I believe. Uh, no stripes on the sleeves, replica of part one. Better face on him. And then right here we have the little Freddy at the boiler room and standing in front of the boiler. In the front, we have another one I really like. This is a uh, Freddy from part one where he cuts his stomach in the boiler room with Nancy. And let's see the green goo in there, that's kind of cool. And behind him, I have the Freddy bobblehead. Just got that recently as a gift. I like that one a lot. And then back here, we have the little cutesy Freddy. They made this one and they made the remake one. I don't have the remake one because it'd have to be a whole hell of a lot cheaper. And in the back, we have the uh, Freddy from part three, the Where's the Fucking Bourbon Freddy, where he cuts off Kirsten's mom's head. Down below that, I have the Series 1 McFarlane toy with a little bit of blood on him, but I don't really care for the face on this one. It's got the witch nose. It kind of reminds me of Freddy from Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Um, but it was my first Freddy figure, you know, as an adult, so I thought it was pretty cool. Got that bad boy in high school. Then right here, I got the Freddy vs. Jason Freddy with the flames. I got a little Freddy pen right here. And then the Freddy vs. Jason card behind him, which back in the day with the glove pulling the mask down. The front here I have the Elm Street shot glass with the fetus Freddy from part five. Next to that we have the pizza of souls, the soul food from part four. We have the Freddy on top of the matchbox car, the Springwood boiler maintenance Freddy. And then we have Deb from part four who turns into the roach and Freddy squashes. And then back there we have the Freddy from part three. This is the uh, skeleton that they have to pour the holy water on in the junkyard. And then up front here we have the front of that shot glass. Uh, kind of looks like kind of looks like Corky from Life goes on. Kind of weird Freddy there. It's got like one blue eye and one fucking like black eye or something. And behind there, this is an awesome one. And I uh, Wes Craven's new nightmare. This is the this is great detail on this one. And in fact, um, if you look down here there's a script that Nancy finds in the movie, well, Heather Langenkamp finds, and 
This actually has the whole scene on it, like all the writing. I mean, this is really detailed pretty well. And in the back here we have the Dr. Freddy, which he's a lot shorter of an action figure. This is the one from Part 4 when Dan gets in the uh, truck accident. But that's pretty much that shelf right there. On this shelf we have the Jack Earl Haley as Fred Krueger, which got this for $4. And I actually got the other one for $4 too from the remake. Um, if they were any more than that, I most likely wouldn't have bought it because I didn't care much for the remake. Back there we have another poster from, it's either Series 1 or Series 2 McFarlane. And then on the front here, we have the Springwood Slasher figure. This is a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. It's basically the Freddy vs. Jason figure with the Robert England head. And he's also holding a little doll. And then next to him, I have the Nancy in the bathtub, which is uh, pretty cool. The detail on her face isn't so great, but you know, that's it's gonna be, it's, it's something I expect from a lot of toy companies to not, <laughs> for some reason, get the faces down just right. And on the other side here, we have the Patricia Arquette's character of Kirsten getting eaten by the Freddy Snake. And back there I put another one of my cards. And at the bottom, you can't really see it, but it says, uh, Can you spare a dime? I guess it was kind of a promo shot for part three with Freddy in the tuxedo. And in the front here, this is old, man. This is an old Max Effects doll. Uh, it's basically, when I was a kid, they had like a, an alien one, I think a Frankenstein, and a Freddy. And it's basically like a weird little Ken doll that you dress up like... You know, is you play makeup effects artist yourself and uh, turn him into Freddy. And I don't know why you would have him not be Freddy because it's pretty kick ass. But that is that shelf. And down on this bottom shelf, I have this is a Freddy doll I got in high school. He used to talk, but he needs new batteries. Um, below there, we got the Freddy belt buckle that my girlfriend got me. This is really cool. I like this. The only thing I didn't like was I wore it one time and the freaking hat pokes you in the belly. I mean, even if you don't have a gut, this fucking thing's gonna jab you, little bastard. And then up here, I got the, uh, this is a bigger version of that Freddy I showed you earlier, of uh, the, uh, Series 2 McFarlane, and he's got a little button on the back, his motion activated, but he pretty much says some cool stuff. And they're direct samples from the movie. And then on the other side here, I have the Freddy vs. Jason version. Which is also motion activated and it goes off like every few seconds usually. Usually I can't keep the fucking thing quiet. So I turn that off. And then in the back here have the old doll from back in the day, man. This thing, uh, it's pretty cool. It has the string on the back, like the old P.B. Herman or Ernest P. World doll. And it has the same flaw that, you know, after a few years it actually, uh, you know, it starts sounding like a retarded chipmunk when you pull the string. And back here, I don't know if you see this, but this is, it's like uh, Billy Bob Thornton is Freddy, it looks like, or maybe like Freddy had a stroke. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But that is pretty much it. That's the uh, entire shelf area of the Freddy Shrine. On the left side of it, I have the original McFarlane figure. He's extremely blood splattered. Uh, I hear he's pretty valuable, but I don't really collect toys for, you know, what they're going to be worth. I think it's just cool, man. It's cool looking. I didn't want to take it out of the package and get it damaged or something. Um, and below there, I have this. I love this, man. I have, My girlfriend framed this up for me. It's out of an old Freddy comic book, and that's just a cool picture. I really dig that. And on the other side here, I have the, which always seems to go crooked at some point, Nightmare on Elm Street 3D poster comes out there you see Nancy from the original box of the VHS and then below I have another one of those pictures that my girlfriend framed for me this one I like but Freddy's wearing some weird sweater in it man I don't think I've seen that in a movie and I think he's wearing a cowboy hat this must be like uh, you know Freddy the cowboy adventurer or something his face looks kind of weird too <laughs> and below that I have the Robert England autograph on the Dreamwares thing pretty cool and last I didn't want to show you everything but I was gonna show you some more little things I could dig out of the closet this is the Freddy's greatest hits Freddy and the dreamers the Elm Street group this has got to be one of the worst records ever made see you got Freddy doing a little dance right there making a little love getting down tonight um, it's got a bunch of originals but it also has a bunch of uh, 50s remakes like um, Wooly Bully and in the midnight hour and originals like Do the Freddy and Elm Street Dreams. 
Uh, the vocals on here are done by some shitty girl group and Robert England, and uh, it's just so bad. Uh, it's a beat up condition. I've had it since I was a little kid. But the record itself is, you know, immaculate. It looks awesome. Um, and then, the, this is the Freddy mask from when I was a little kid. I wore this to trick or treating several times. Um, and it's got some holes and stuff in it, but you know, overall it's um, pretty good condition, especially since I've had it since I was like six, man. This is, you know, 20 odd years. This thing is pretty good condition. I still scare people with the fucking thing. And there's that. And then below here, I have, it's this is a three book series. Um, I guess three authors wrote a couple of Nightmare on Elm Street novels. Two of these, I've read one, I've read most of the other. Those are all right. The third one I started on, it's like a softcore porn. It's bad. <laughs> and then next, I got the uh, novelization of Nightmare on Elm Street 1, 2, and 3. And 3 in this one is actually the Wes Craven script, so it's uh, quite a bit different than the uh, finished movie. We got Freddy on the back there wearing some... looks like he just bought a new hat. I mean, I guess he's getting that from the uh, Freddy record money. But, um... Uh, yeah, this, this is pretty cool to read. I like reading it because, you know, it's a little bit different. Even the one and two are a little bit different from the movies. And then below that, I have the Wes Craven's New Nightmare novelization. This one's pretty cool because it has, between chapters, it has some, like, news stories about the earthquakes and the deaths and things. So, I mean, they kind of elaborate on what happens in the movie and in, in the novel. So it's kind of cool. Below here, I have a Nightmare on Elm Street trade paperback by Dixon, West, and Almond. This is piss poor writing and art. I mean, this is terrible. Um, I really, really just look at that. Freddy's hand coming out of a toilet. That right there should tell you something about this fucking comic series. Yeah, it should be thrown in the fucking toilet. And then uh, below here, I have the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, the series one of this. Uh, this I really liked. I thought it was pretty damn awesome. Um, I haven't read series two yet, but I heard it was just as good, so I'm pretty excited. Got the Freddy on the back there. It looks like Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy, and then you have the Necronomicon. Then I have the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the beginning comic book issue two. They were supposed to make three of these. I can't find part one, and three was never made. I guess innovation went out of business or something and just never happened. And then uh, this series I'm about to show you, this is one that I would love to finish one day. It's the uh, innovation six issue Nightmare on Elm Street series. Um, I have issue one there, and Issue 2 with an awesome cover. I mean, that art looks just like Heather Langenkamp and Robert England. Looks excellent. I mean, it's beautiful. And then next, we've got Issue 3. And then Issue 5. I'm missing Issue 4 and 6. And on Issue 5, we have uh, Yvonne from Part 5, Alice from Part 5, and Dr. Gordon from Part 3. And I think that's supposed to be um, Jacob from Part 5 also, grown up a little bit. But I've read the first three issues, but you know I don't want to finish it until I find four and six. But that is pretty much it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Freddy Krueger Shrine. I have more stuff to show you, but for another time perhaps. Till next time, Kruger Nation.